Okay, um, so today we're working with case three. Um, this is a 17-year-old boy who has, uh, had been uh, severely injured in a car accident. Um, so he had a complete spinal cord injury at L1. So he does not have any, um, he has no sensory below L1, but I think he has just, a, yeah, he has a little bit of motor. He has um, the ability to kind of do like hip flexion with his hip flexors. And then his adductor group is somewhat there with a rating of four. Um, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. So I have my paper here just to make sure we're on track with everything we're gonna do. So this is a transport chair. This is the one that we had access to. Um, so with the first thing I was gonna t educate the patient on is um, how they would lock the brakes. With a transport chair, um, I've seen some modifications to get make it so people can lock it themselves, but safety-wise, I think it's really, it's too unstable to have people trying to reach the, the, rack, the uh, rear wheels. So pretty much with almost all mobility with a transport chair, they need a, a caregiver present. Um, so this would, this would not be the ideal chair for this kind of patient, but we'll go ahead and pretend to the degree that we can uh, that it is a, you know, like just kind of more standard chair uh, maybe one lower to the ground with the big wheel so he can uh, be able to do, because I think he's pretty athletic, so he would want a chair more like that. Um, so we're going to start with educating them on how to lock the brakes. So that's pretty simple. On a normal chair, there would just be like a big wheel right here, and that the brake would usually be within reach on this region right here. But on the, on the transport chair, they're back here, so you just kind of push down until it clicks. Same thing with the other side. I'll go ahead and lock it for now. Right. And then next we're gonna try to work on removing certain parts of the chair just to make sure that the patient knows how they could, um, you know, just kind of modify the shape of the chair if they needed to for transfers or what have you. Um, this patient's focus is uh, transports into the car. That's what they wanna get better at. So being able to modify the chair how they can would be the best. Um, so this patient, they might be able to help hip flex their foot off of the pedal, um, but I mean, I'll be there just to help them. So go ahead and lift this foot. There we go. And it looks like he's managing to hold up his foot um, and then just kind of bring it back down. And then in this case, I'll just kind of take the, the leg wrist all the way off. Same thing with this foot. Good. And rest. Okay. And so that's the leg rests. Um, on a normal standard wheelchair like what we're talking about these armrests also come off um, and sometimes that's necessary for transfers like uh, how it says in the case he wants to get better at, at car transfers so sometimes it's necessary to take this armrest off here so that whenever he does the transfer he doesn't bump the side of it or just make it easier in general to use um, I believe that's the only part of this chair that we can Remove. There's a part of transport chairs that folds down in the back, but that's simply for storage reasons. There's no other um, part of the chair that modifies besides that for functional use. Um, we're also going to do a little bit of wheelchair mobility, but we're going to go outside to do that. So I just wanted to kind of start off the case here and uh, kind of get our bearings of what we're doing. Okay. And then so for this second part of the test, or video, um, I'm going to unlock these brakes here. There we go. Okay. And so we're going to go through propulsion um, in a transport chair. You can kind of walk your feet sometimes, but it's, like I said, transport chairs are mostly, and you know, just because of the stability of it, care, caregiver dependent. So what she's going to do if this is a real wheelchair, she's going to put her hands right here. She's going to hold on to the wheel, the fake wheel. There we go. And then so what she's going to do is she's going to reach back as far back on the, the big wheel as she can. And then do like as long of a push as she can. Do a long, go ahead and push. Long push. <laughs> long push of the, wheel, of the wheel of your hand. There you go. Long push. There we go. But less, less torso motion. And so what we're going to do with that is 
Um, she just has to push forward as far as she can uh, and then make sure that she lets go a little bit so that way she can coast because um, you don't want constant motion and you don't want short little short little tiny pushes um, so that way to save her shoulders and her back and everything um, and then so next just because we're in front of a curb right here we're gonna do curb mobility if it was a chair that she could do this safely she would wheelie first but if it's caregiver dependent you push up on the back, have the front wheels go up onto the curb. There we go. And then the caregiver lifts the person up. There we go. I'm going to pause since it's starting to rain a little bit. All right. All right, now so that we're covered up from the rain. We're going to continue by talking about uh, how we would go about uh, negotiating ramps and also how we would train the patient to do a wheelie since that would be uh, important for a younger person to be able to kind of like negotiate curbs or uneven surfaces, stuff like that. So we'll start with ramps. So what she would do is when she's going up the ramp, she would make sure to lean forward and always have a hold of the, the wheel as part of the wheelchair. So, um, and if she's needing to stop, she would keep a hand on the wheelchair, on the wheels, so that way she doesn't roll backwards. But she has to kind of lean forward so that when she's pushing up the ramp, she doesn't tip backwards. Um, and she also has to kind of be careful of how sharp the motion is forward, so because that will also have the wheelchair tip backwards. Um, and then, so, and then coming down the ramp, she just kind of keeps the hands on the wheels to make sure she's directing which, how she's going down the ramp. But I mean, you can kind of just let gravity take you and control the speed as you're going down the ramp. Um, and then so the wheelie, uh, something that I really liked that the video did is they used a gate belt and put it on the back of the chair, like on the post on the back so that way the, the uh, therapist can hold onto the chair but uh, there's not too much of a spot to do that on this one, I don't think. But the basic idea is that you would attach it somewhere on a normal wheelchair, there'd be something down here that I could attach it to. So that way, when we're training the person to wheelie, I'm gonna lock that chair real quick. When we're training the person to wheelie and trying to help them find where their balance is in the back, you can have a hold of the bottom so that way it doesn't slip that way too quick. But, so the guard, the first step is locking the wheels and having them figure out how they're going to balance with the, uh, as far as wheeling, they have to find their center of their center when wheeling. And then from there, then they unlock and see if they can keep that. And that's really important for negotiating uneven um, surfaces and then getting the front wheel onto the curb independently. Um, but that's of course unsafe in a transport chair so we're just kind of demonstrating that for this one now stairs stairs is a, a three well a two caregiver operation and then the patient um, can hold on keep a hold of the wheels keep a hold of the wheels and then they're going to try to do kind of like a reverse pull on the wheel so I'll kind of get in position, but of course, in a transport chair, the best you could do is just basically lifting the person. It probably wouldn't be very safe. Um, but there's gonna be a caregiver um, down the stairs, inferior, and then there's gonna be a caregiver assisting with the push up, which is gonna be above the patient, superior, up the stairs. Um, so I'll kind of get in position like I was going to, but we're not gonna do it for this one, just because this chair isn't quite safe for that, and I don't have another person. So we're gonna kind of back up to the, the stairs here. There we go. There we go. And we're kind of putting the big wheels up the stairs so that way you can use the big wheel to go one step at a time. And then so the caregiver behind up the stairs is to stagger their st stance so they can help with the lift coming up the stairs. All 
believe that's everything. Let me make sure I've got everything here. Pause. All right. Um, and the last thing that I wanted to make sure I address is folding the wheelchair. If the chair is like this one, here, let me straighten this one back out. Oop, there we go. Okay. If the chair is like this transport chair or any chair that has like a, a canvas or fabric seat and back, you can just collapse it. This one is you pull up like this. I think pretty much all of them, the way you collapse them, it slides along this track here and then in the back it has like an accordion thing down here and you just kind of collapse it so that way you can fit it into cars or just carry it easier. easier. Um, if it has any, uh, if it has a rigid piece in the chair, you would probably have to do some disassembly to, to collapse it um, just because there's like a custom rigid piece for extra back support. Um, there's not, there's only so much you can do to collapse it. Um, so you would just need to, that would probably be a, an upside or a downside, you know. If you want a custom back, then you'll have a harder time transporting it, uh, at least without, without the person in it. It's usually better in the long run for the patient. Um, I think that's everything. The only thing I didn't do, um, just because it was starting to rain a little bit, is down the curb. Um, it's pretty much the same principle, though. You just make sure that the patient is the front wheels. The danger is really those front caster wheels, especially on uh, really, really on any chair, uh, because those smaller wheels can get caught on stuff. So you have to kind of have them in, in a wheelie stance anyway. Um, and you just have to keep them in a wheelie and kind of slowly descend them down the curb. There we go. Okay. All right. And this last little bit is just um, in the video that was presented um, with a standard wheelchair. You go down the curb kind of in like a wheelie stance facing towards the curb. But with this transport chair, the wheels on the back are too small to do that. Um, so what you, I'm going to demonstrate kind of the safest way to get down from a curb with a transport chair. Yeah. There we go. 